thank you for your time. And uh, thank you for the opportunity to share my story about uh, my vision of the future of learning, which is an invitation to connect schools to community. I would like to acknowledge that for 25 years, my, my work and my life and my learning has been on the traditional unceded territories of the Squamish and Seashell First Nations. Gibson's Harbor, a short ferry trip away from Vancouver, and this class is going to school. It's not a field trip. They're going to school. Uh, the framing of, of my talk is uh, kind of a story within a story. I have a personal experience to, to share with you about how I first uh, was curious about my practice. And then the story is sort of nestled in among, amongst a number of other initiatives happening around the same theme. And so, this classroom, fairly typical of an elementary school teacher, I would have um, charts on the walls to articulate uh, what cooperative learning looks like and sounds like. I'd have uh, books, picture books, science materials, math, uh, hands-on things, tucked in bins, a bit of a mess, yes. But I felt I was, um, I was doing my job. I am a teacher, I am an educator, I am the holder of knowledge. Students come to me, your children. My job is to make them smarter. So, that's fine. I, I, I accept that, but there was always a sense of, um, I'm not sure if I'm reaching all the students. Are they really engaged? And when going on a field trip, you would see them come alive. You would see that excitement, the novelty of being out of the box. One day, by the sign-in book in the staff room, there was a notice. And the notice was an invitation to come to what was called Aqua School. And so I'm curious. I have a passion for science. I open up the brochure, and it's... Um, First, looks like a field trip, and then I realize it's not a field trip. It's a week at the aquarium, and I'm involved as a co-planner. This was exciting to me, and I thought, well, let's, let's try this. this. This is a bit daunting. There are all kinds of reasons not to go. Busing, permission slips, all the structures that we have in place, reasons not to go. But I thought, let's try it. So my introduction to this model was going to the aquarium to be involved in planning with the staff in place. Our week was co-designed. So if you can imagine, your students at an aquarium, at a museum, at a science center for a week, what could you do? What subject could you not address in that time? So we had planned to talk to marine biologists. Uh, we got the behind-the-scenes tour down behind the shark tank, watching the staff cut up the food. Uh, we got to be in the wet lab, we went to the rowing club for lunch, we dissected squid in Stanley Park into the gazebo. Amazing, amazing experiences. This was the classroom. So what happened on the second day, this is kind of the pivotal moment for me. On the second day, we had done, a, like I would mentioned, an inter interview with a marine biologist. And we had asked her fairly frank questions in a nice sort of intimate setting. And then after lunch, we gathered by the beluga tank at the time. There's a coffee shop there, it's outside, and the students have their journals and their pencil boxes, and some of them had stopwatches dangling out of their back pockets. And the um, coordinator framed the session by saying, now it's time to choose, and now it's time for you to find your place to observe. 45 minutes, you choose. Total personalized learning. Students had a choice of where to go. They could look at cockroaches in the Amazon gallery. They could look at um, the sea otters and they're you know, lying on their backs. So, off they go. And what am I doing? Standing there next to the cappuccino machine, wondering what to do. I'm no longer the gatekeeper. I'm no longer the holder of knowledge. I'm in the midst of a place-based learning experience where I now have to facilitate the interactions of the students with the place. So my role had shifted. So let me show you for a few seconds what it might be like. I find that quite soothing. <laughs> you have a a student who has a passion about fish. Right? They're interested in fish, they're interested in scuba diving, they've maybe seen a, a video or uh, done some, some work around marine life. And here's their chance to sit for 45 minutes and journal and draw and ask questions about what they're seeing. 
So this is what it looks like on uh, a grade seven boy who had an uh, interest in sea lions. So given choice, given time, slowing down, he was allowed to observe. And his choice of observations were the lap recordings of the male. In this case, how many laps within a minute would it do in the tank? Then lower down on the right side, you'll see a sea lion bark uh, was his second observation. So he was given four days to choose and sit and record and, and be like a scientist. And then we can have a very deep and informed conversation on pros and cons of captivity, which is very topical, has been in the moment in Vancouver. What are the pros and cons? He's talked to a marine biologist. He's sat there and watched these creatures. He's watched the interactions of the creatures in the public. And he can come up with a very informed opinion. And I would argue his mind has been stretched. And so was mine. So I had immersed myself in this experience for a week and had seen the power in that learning model. So we turn the page because, in a sense, this story within a story now moves to a different chapter. My roles over the years changed, and now I find myself advocating for this model, for this community as classroom model. And that distinction is important. It's not, it's not classroom to community, which it, it does involve. It's the classroom as in the community. It's there. So we leave the room, we leave the box, we move ourselves into place, and for a week we are informed by our environment and the people there. So Chilliwack, very exciting, just yesterday met with the staff at the Museum and Archives. They are running two classes this year, coming in for a week. And the teachers are co-planning with the site staff. Sunshine Coast Museum and Archives, for 10 years, we've had the luxury, the privilege of having Jillian, who began this work in 1993, shown here with the students on the floor, and they are journaling uh, with some artifacts in the museum. So in that case, the students would come for a week to Laura Gibson's, they would work with Matthew, the coordinator, and they would then design their learning around the curriculum, students' interests, the place, and the people. So a student, given time and choice, is interested in some of the marine history of Gibson's. So this is her work. And she'll be given this opportunity four times in four days mixed up with other activities and opportunities in the Lower Gibsons area. On the left side, you see some students dissecting owl pellets. And we could do that in class. We could order pellets and take them apart on our desks in class. But we could do it in place, and we could have somebody from Wild BC come in and bring pelts and talk about the interactions of humans and creatures in their community and how do we mitigate those downsides to growth and expansion of our, of our town. Many field trips would involve walking by things. So at the aquari aquarium, you might walk by the shark tank and go, that's cool, wow, that's huge, and then off you go. So the novelty effect never really stops for the half day that you're there. This boy, who's interested in blacksmithing, is sitting in the display. He's inside, across the rope. He's in there using these journal prompts to expand his thinking and do some deep inquiry. So we turn the page to Chilliwack. We see the uh, landing page on the website. Two classes coming in to visit this facility. And uh, very exciting, just around the corner. Happy to say that uh, the staff are completely on board. And it's a different approach. So, okay, traditionally, as a classroom teacher, I could be, you know, in late August, preparing for my, my students coming in. I'm thinking social studies, I'm thinking history, I'm thinking community and government. And I would turn, and I would go to the shelf behind my desk and pull out, a, pull out a teacher's guide, pull out some textbooks, pull out some resource books I think will help us. So look on the internet. In this model, we might pull out the experiences guide for the Fraser Valley and think, where could we place our students? Who could we connect them to in the community to develop powerful learning experiences? So place equals textbook. Connections are student engagement, and the partnerships open up opportunities. Polygon Gallery. North Vancouver. We had two classes from Queen Mary come down last year. We supported them. We supported them at the presentation house in experiencing this model. So what was their choice? Well, they chose to look at architecture because the Polygon Gallery at the time was being built. So that became one of the themes for the week. So students, 
upon returning to the classroom because there is a strong connection between the class and the site, both before and after, drafted their dream museums, including a water slide, which I totally agree with. There should be a water slide in all museums and galleries. And then as things emerge in this model, it's very fluid, it's a framework, it's not this is how you do it, it's more of an open-ended framework. They designed in 3D what their dream galleries or museums would look like. And then the site staff thought, well, this is interesting. We're really getting something here. Let's uh, have an installation. Let's bring all the student work back to the presentation house gallery. Let's install it. And serendipitously, it was second report card conferences. So the students got all dressed up, and they stood in front of their creations, and parents came in. The students owned the site. It was their place. They were proud. And now the, uh, the text you see on the slide is from the website. The Polygon Gallery now open is advertising gallery school for students and teachers to come in. And this text is significant because this is the words of the museum staff, the gallery staff, inviting educators in to make a partnership. I have a, a few quotes from grade 3, grade 4, and grade 11 students. And we're going to play a little bit of music here from the curator of the school in Gibsons uh, as you read these quotes. Thank you, Matthew, for the permission to use your song. Those quotes were taken from Campus Calgary and the Open Minds program. So for 23 years, if you can imagine, a district, a district the size of Vancouver and Surrey combined has had 112,000 students learning in place. They've gone to museums, to art galleries, to city hall, and the responses have been from the site staff incredibly positive. We welcome that connection. And those students, those quotes, um, taking the community, authentic environments, making that connection. Amazingly powerful. We have total permission. These are quotes from the BC Ministry of Curriculum, written by your colleagues, my colleagues, for the ministry, giving us permission to innovate, giving us permission to connect to community, move the learning out of the box into place. And the research, I think all uh, education sort of shifts or change or innovation should be grounded in some research, something that affirms our own intuitive sense. And, and this is it, Jillian's work, Seeing the World in 3D, published 22 years ago now, sets a framework in place. And that is echoed by the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, just published, 2017, Network Learning Systems. We need to consider the power in learning by bridging between the formal education structures and the informal. Hybrid learning, what does that look like? In BC, I think we, we could look at this framework as a way of moving forward. So I see this invitation to sort of unpack our thinking a bit, to move from the classroom to the community. And in the words of that grade four student, the power of that learning model, the connections, the sense of belonging is so strong. So thank you for your time and thank you for considering.